بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ولا يصح بجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته all praise due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى who knows what we reveal and knows what we conceal and even knows what the animals feel we thank him, we praise him and on him we have reliance it is to him we only turn to for true guidance we ask him to send his peace, his blessings, his mercy on the best of human beings and prophets Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam on whom be praised until the very end of our days and we ask him for steadfastness, guidance, mercy and to never lead us astray for him to save us on judgment day we welcome everybody alhamdulillah to session number 10 of the reading and commentary and discussion of the principles of spirituality by the prolific by the prolific scholar of uh, Islam and spirituality and fiqh, uh, Shaykh Aisha al Ba'uniya, this great woman scholar, Rahimahullahu Ta'ala Rahmatan Wasi'a. Uh, and we're on the second principle. The first principle being obviously Tawbah that we discussed in great detail. And now we're discussing uh, the principle of ikhlas, sincerity. And uh, we are on uh, page 49 and 2.15 uh, on the, the, the section um, by the editor. Um, and she says uh, in the Arabic, because I, f- I feel the Arabic is sometimes more, more clear. Uh, she says, وَقَالَ عِكْرِمَةُ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ عَنْهُمْ رحمه الله والله لا يعطي الله العبد على نيته ما لا يعطي على عمله شي سا شي سا ذا رحمه الله سز والله لا 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 يعطي الله على العبد على نيته ما لا يعطي على عمله وَذَلِكَ أَنَّ النِّيَةَ لَا رِيَاءَ فِيهَا Listen to this. She says, رحمه الله تعالى, that Ikrima says, I swear by Allah that He rewards, Allah rewards the servant based on their intention and not on the action. Uh, and actually that's a wrong translation. Allah will reward based on the intention what, they will, what He does not reward based on the action. So the, the, the translation actually a little bit is wrong. The translation of the editor is, ro- is wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward the slave uh, for the intention, what he will not reward for the action. Meaning what? The intention is actually much more rewarded than a person's action. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said in a number of a hadith to exemplify this. Number, uh, one of them is sabaqa. Dinar alfa dinar. The Prophet said one dinar was better than one thousand dinar. One thousand dinar. And uh, this is so important to understand why the Prophet said this. Why would one dinar outweigh or be better than one thousand dinar? The reason for this is because of the intention of the person that gave that one dinar as opposed to one thousand dinar. Why? Because a person who may have had one dinar, one gold coin, right? Maybe that's half of their wealth. Maybe that's the, uh, the wealth that they made that day. Okay? Maybe it's not even close to uh, maybe the savings that they had, right? Uh, or maybe in, in essence, this one dinar was something that they were saving for, for something you know, th- that they cherished, maybe for their own benefit. But they decided to give it in charity. Whereas maybe somebody who's so wealthy... And they gave a thousand dinar, a thousand gold coins, right? That's, and, and it's like pocket change to them, right? It's like us buying a coffee versus this person throwing down a thousand dollars is like nothing or a thousand pounds or a thousand whatever you're from. So in that sense, look at the intention behind the action in and of itself. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said that one dollar, in essence... Uh, preceded and was much better than one thousand dollars. Why? Because of the intention, and that's why there's a narration which has some weakness in it, where Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Niyatul mu'min khairu min amali," that the intention of a believer is better than their actions. And in this sense, it may have the the it may have a sense of weakness according to some scholars, but the meaning is one hundred percent sound. Why? Because a person who has a good intention will be rewarded for something they didn't even get a chance to do. You intended to do some charity and you completely forgot. Allah will still reward you as if you did it. So in that sense, the, the intention is much more important. And the Prophet ﷺ said, so many hadith that there's a 
portion in the uh, in a person's body, if it becomes refined and rectified, the entire body becomes rectified, and if it becomes corrupt, the entire body becomes corrupt. Allah al qalb. It is the heart, and the heart holds within it its intention. And then uh, there's a beautiful line of Imam uh, Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah. He said, "Wal qalbu baytul Rabb jalla jalaluhu." Allahu Akbar. Listen to this. Ibn al-Qayyim said, "And the heart is the sanctuary of Allah." the most high and the most deserving. The heart is the sanctuary of Allah. Meaning what? That is where the communication receptacle of that communication takes place through what? Through the person's sincerity. Can literally mean the house of Allah. And the house of Allah, you don't call that anything except the Kaaba and, and any masjid is called the house of Allah. But he said that a house or a sanctuary that is actually much more uh, sacred is, is a believer's heart. Okay. So he said that the, the heart is something even more sacred than the, than the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Okay. Um, and He's, and she says, this is because, uh, sorry, she says and continues, Ikrima radiallahu ta'ala, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, وَذَلِكَ أَنَّ النِّيَّةَ لَا رِيَا فِيهَا Because the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards for an intention, what He does not reward for, uh, for an action, meaning much more so than that. W- what reason, what's the reason for that? Ikrima says, this is because the intention can have no hypocrisy in it. How can intention have no hypocrisy in it? Meaning that the righteous intention can have no hypocrisy in it. You can't show off. By the way, the word hypocrisy is also wrong here. This is a wrong translation. He he said intention cannot have showing off in it. So in essence, a person who has a sound intention, what does that do? Can anyone see what's in your heart? So what, in essence, what's in your heart, no one can see. How can you show off your intention? You go around and telling, unless you tell your intentions to people trying to show off. That is uh, one way for, um, for uh, it, there can be int- uh, showing off an intention. But what he means by in your heart, can anyone see what's in your heart? Of course not. So that's why the, uh, the fact that if an intention is sincere, then it will be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that um, cannot even be rewarded uh, through... Uh, an action because an action can be done for showing off okay I apologize just give me one second for there's some internet issues inshallah okay alright so she continues by saying Wuhayb ibn al-Ward say qala Wuhayb ibn al-Ward idha aradta al-deen fabni ala thalath if you want Faith, if you want religion, then base it on three different things. Three things. Number one, على الزهد وعلى الورع والإخلاص فإنك إن بنيت على غير هذه إن هدم البنيان. Listen to this. وهب ابن ال or وهيب ابن الورد said, if you want to build your deen, then base it on three things. Number one, الزهد. A zuhd is detachment from anything that uh, will harm you in the akhirah. Okay, a zuhd is anything that will, uh, will 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 detach anything that will harm your akhirah. Okay, and the second one is al wara, which is uh, staying away and renouncing something that will not benefit you in the hereafter. That will not benefit you in the hereafter. Okay? So the difference between zuhd and wara, we're going to tell you in detail. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah mentions this, and we'll share it with you right now, inshallah. Okay. So Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he says, Ibn al-Qayyim, Zuhd, to, to renounce or to detach from something. Okay? 
uh, he said, Ibn al-Qayyim, he said, I, I heard Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, may Allah uh, sanctify his soul. قَدَّسَ اللَّهُ رُوحَهُ يَقُولُ الزهد, الزهد تَرْكْ مَا لَا يَنْفَعْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ تَرْكْ مَا لَا يَنْفَعْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ Is uh, detaching from anything that will not benefit your hereafter. So I switched them, okay? Zuhd is detaching from anything that will not benefit your hereafter. And wara' cautiousness, is تَرْكْ مَا تَخَافْ ضَرَرَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ is to leave off that which may harm your hereafter. So, wara is cautiousness, and zuhd is known as asceticism. Asceticism is leaving things off because it will not benefit your hereafter. And cautiousness, wara is to leave things that may harm your hereafter. So, zuhd is it's not going to benefit your hereafter, and wara is it's not going to. Uh, you're going to leave it off because it may harm your hereafter. Hence why it's called cautiousness. And she says, the third thing is sincerity. So these three things. Have zuhd, have wara, and have sincerity. Why does he say that? He said, if you build on anything else, the building will collapse. And I want you to understand the powerful nature of, or in the depth of this, uh, of this uh, uh, statement. If you were to build your faith on only outward actions and outward things, and you don't have a sense of sincerity, that means everything you've been doing outwardly without sincerity can be rejected. Why? إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Allah does not, إِنَّمَا is harf hasr. Allah meaning Allah does not and will never accept from anyone except those who are God conscious. إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ So, if a person doesn't have taqwa, which is a form of sincerity, you're being God consciousness, right? To, to have a sense of God consciousness, hence why you're sincere. If a person does not have this, then they can have the, all of their actions rejected. So it can't just be on outward actions. And if a person keeps doing things not, uh, that will not benefit them in the hereafter, they just keep doing random things that does not have any benefit then what are they building the hereafter for? And if a person doesn't have wara, being cautious of not doing something that will harm their hereafter, no doubt they will fall into haram. And they will fall into things that will harm their hereafter because they're not cautious. And that's what the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith of Nu'man ibn Bashir, right? He says, the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّ الْحَلَالَ بَيْنُ وَإِنَّ الْحَرَامَ بَيْنُ Halal is clear and haram is clear. No one's, no one's debating on halal and haram. وَبَيْنَهُمَا أُمُورٌ مُشْتَبِهَاتٌ And between them are doubtful matters. فَمَنْ وَقَعَ And the Prophet ﷺ says, لَا يَعْلَمُهُنَّ كَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ A lot of people don't know the answer to these doubtful issues. Is this halal or this haram? A lot of people don't know. So the Prophet ﷺ says, فَمَنْ اتَّقَ الشُّبُهَات فَقَدْ اسْتَبْرَ عَلِي دِينِهِ وَعِرْضِهِ Whoever stays away from those doubtful matters that they don't have answers to because they don't have access to a teacher, they don't have somebody to clarify for them, then they have protected their honor and their deen. And whoever falls into these doubtful matters is like grazing on a border. Right? Like a shepherd that grazes its sheep uh, on, on a border. What happens? The sheep will automatically cross the border. What happens? The sheep may fall into the sanctuary, it's forbidden. What's the forbidden sanctuary? The Prophet says all things that the Prophet forbade. All things that the Prophet forbade. And then the Prophet ties with that the previous portion of this hadith that we mentioned. Right? That Allah fil jasadi mudra. In the heart, there is a morsel. Sorry, in the body, there's a morsel. If it becomes refined and rectified, the entire body becomes rectified. And if it becomes corrupt, the entire body becomes corrupt, and that is the heart. What's the relationship? This exact statement of Wuhayb ibn al-Wart. This exact statement. Meaning what? Build your deen on these three things. Because it will help you to rectify your heart, and your heart is the most important thing that you need to worry about. And then making sure your actions are sound. As long as your heart is sound, Allah can forgive some actions. But if your heart is not sound, then none of the actions are accepted. Isn't that powerful? 
The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that if a person has a sound intention and they may fall into something out of their fall, out of their sound intention, maybe Allah Azza wa will will maybe accept from them. Maybe as long as they intended to do the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, to uh, do it according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, wanted, and then they accidentally may have fallen into something that's that's improper or incorrect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself says, a dua that we always recite in Surah Al-Baqarah. رَبَّنَ لَا تُؤَخِذْنَا إِنَّ نَسِينَا وَأَخْطَأْنَا O our Lord, do not hold us to account if we what? If we forgot or we made a mistake. SubhanAllah, Allah is the one telling us to say this dua because He forgives mistakes and shortcomings. So that's why it's so important. And then she says and continues by saying and quoting Ibn Mas'ud رضي الله تعالى عنه. قَالَ إِبْنِ مَسْعُود النَّجَاتُ فِثْنَتَيْنِ النَّجَاتُ فِثْنَتَيْنِ That uh, salvation is in two things. So this is Ibn Mas'ud رضي الله تعالى عنه. النِّيَّةُ وَالْحَيَاءَ النِّيَّةُ وَالْحَيَاءَ Intention, meaning sincerity and intention, and making sure you have sound intention. Walhaya, which is what? Modesty and shyness and dignity. Haya is not just being shy. Because sometimes in some places you don't need to be shy, you need to speak up. But the idea of dignity and modesty and shyness, you will have salvation in these two things, he said. Intention, meaning sound intention, sincerity. And the second is haya, modesty. And dignity, okay? And shyness for the sake of Allah. And then he continues by saying, وَالْهَلَكَةُ fitnatain," And being destroyed in destruction is in two things. الْقُنُوطُ وَالْإِعْجَابُ الْقُنُوطُ وَالْإِعْجَابُ Which means uh, to despair. القنوط is despair. When people, when they commit sins, what happens? They go into a sense of despair. And that's what shaitan wants you to do. You, shaitan wants you to despair from Allah's mercy. And that's why his name is Iblis. Which means the one who despaired from the mercy of Allah. That's what his name means. So what does he try us to do? If we commit sins, what do we do? You're like, oh man, I committed sins anyway. So might as well. And what happens? The person keeps committing sins and sins and sins and sins. Because they despaired. And that's why it is haram for you to have despair. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ لِعِبَادِي الَّذِينَ أَصْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا طَقْنَةُ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Say to my servants who have wronged themselves, don't ever despair from the mercy of Allah. It's haram for you to have despair. You always have to have hope in the mercy of Allah. So number one, if you have despair, it leads to destruction. And the second thing he said, وَالْإِعْجَابِ إِعْجَابِ is self-admiration, not just pride as they mistranslated here. This book has a number of mistranslations, this academic uh, translation. Pride is not necessarily the only thing. I'jab is what? Self-admiration. Ujb is to admire yourself. Narcissism in many ways. Okay? So it's a pride in self-admiration. That will destroy yourself. Why? Because you think you're better than others. Because you think you're better than others. So when you ever, whenever you think you're better than someone else, خلاص, you have committed the same sin as, as shaitan, as iblis. He thought he was better than everyone. He didn't even obey the command of Allah because of that. Okay, excellent. And then she says, our man, she quotes Al-Hasan al-Basri. Qala Al-Hasan al-Basri, rahimahullahu ta'ala. Our man. Innama khullida ahlul jannati fil jannati wa ahlul nari fil nari bin niyat. Listen to this. The people of, twa- of paradise who dwell in paradise for eternity and the people of hellfire that will dwell, dwell in hellfire for eternity. They, they dwell in either heaven or hell based on their intentions. Based on their intentions. So if intentions are so pricey, and if intentions are so priceless, that means what? The vast majority of our focus should be on whether our intentions are correct or rectified. Stop being so concerned. With the outward superficial, when a person's internal is kharab, is, destru- is destruction basically. What's more important than that is intention. And yes, of course, doing something properly is of course the second most important condition in accepted amal. They have two conditions. Number one, sincerity of intention. Number two, correct or correct, uh, correctness based on the sunnah of Rasulullah wasallam. No doubt. But the most important of the two 
is no doubt intention. No doubt. Okay? And uh, we'll get to this very shortly in the state of Hudayl ibn Iyab. Okay? She then quotes Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu ardah. وَقَالَ أَبُوْ هُرَيْرَةُ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ عَنْهُ أَرْضَاهُ مَكْتُوبٌ فِي التَّوْرَاتِ مَا أُرِيدَ بِهِ وَجِهَةِ فَقَلِيلُهُ كَثِيرٌ وَمَا أُرِيدَ بِهِ غَيْرَ غَيْرَ وَجِهَةِ فَكَثِيرُهُ قَلِيلٌ Which says, Abu Hurairah said that it's written in the Torah, the Torah of, of Musa alayhi salam, that which was intended for my sake, although it is little, is a lot. Whatever is intended for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though it is a little, it is considered a lot to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because how many human beings are sincere on this planet? Al-ikhlas aziz. Sincerity is rare. You can't find genuine human beings with each other. How find a sincere person to Allah? Right? How many genuine people do you know? You can genuinely say, I know these people are genuine. You can count them maybe on your hands. What about those who are sincere then to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How many of them are there? Al-ikhlas aziz. Sincerity is, is, is extremely rare, right? I mean, we're not going to exaggerate, but it's rare, okay? So, the pro- so, so he said that it, it's written that that which was intended for my sake, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking, though it may be little, is considered a lot, is much. Whereas that which is intended for other than me, although it might be little, or, or might be a lot, excuse me, but it's considered little. Meaning what? It's nothing. If you intend for other than Allah, somebody gives two million dollars. And why do they give? Because of, being show- of showing off. Saying, look how much money I have, look how generous I am, and they give, they give all this money. Or they do a task, or they go to a charity, and then they Instagram themselves, right? To the whole, I'm helping. Be very careful. Be very careful. Social media can destroy your intentions. The good that you may do, khalas, it's gone. That's what, that's what uh, this, this narration says. As much person travels and goes and spends money and does all of that. Not correct, so... It's as if it's not, it's, uh, it's, it's a thing. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, a person will come on the day of judgment thinking that they have all of this good, and what, what they will become happy. It will, it will be like, as, what happens? Even if there's no wind, it flies away far. That's how, that's how people's deeds will become. May Allah protect us from being that. Now, Fudayl ibn Iyad Allah Ta'ala Listen to this Qala Fudayl ibn Radiyallahu Ta'ala Al-A'an Wa lam yakun khalisan Lam yuqbal Wa idha kana khalisan Wa lam yakun Hatta yakun Khalisan Sawaba Listen to this This is one of the most Comprehensive Statements Explaining the relationship between sound action and sincere intention action with sincere intention okay listen to this rahimahullah ta'ala if an action is done correctly but is insincere it will not be accepted Person got together, gathered the whole dunya, the whole task force team. Let's go do something for the soup kitchen. Let's go do something for Habitat for Humanity. Let's set up this charity. Let's build this school. Let's uh, run this organization. Let's make an educational foundation. Let's whatever. They did a huge amount of work. Everything they did is correct, but guess what? They did not have sincerity. It will not be accepted. It will be not. It will not be accepted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about in, in the last page of Surah Al-Kaf about those who come on the day of judgment annahum, they will think that they uh, sun'a, that they have done a lot of good in, the, in this life who are they? Uh, you know uh, a belief that's not in the belief there's so much that was that, that 
of thinking that there was good that's going to come, but they rejected Islam. They did not accept Islam. Or Muslims who have all of these deeds in front of them, thinking that they're going to get a, a huge pile of reward, but what they did not check is their intentions. So what would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says? They're akhsarina a'mala. He says that they are the most, they are the, the biggest losers in terms of their deeds. Because they will have all their deeds rejected because they didn't have one thing, which is sincerity. And that's why sincerity is so important. Sincerity is so important. And then he says, and if an action, listen to this, it's not over. He said, if an action is sincere, but it is not correctly, meaning correctly, it's correct based on the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad People don't just invent things based on their own desire. I'm going to go uh, do this sajda this certain way and a time when it's haram to do that. No, you basically according to the and the scholars of Islam because they understood the interpretation of the Quran and Sunnah. Of course. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says um, that um, if you don't uh, ask the people of knowledge if you don't know what of the book and the sunnah of Rasulullah If an action is sincere but not correct, it is not becomes both sincere and correct. Sincere and correct. Those are the two conditions of accepted actions. Beautiful, right? Then she quotes uh, Ayub al-Sakhtiyani. Ayub al-Sakhtiyani radiyallahu ta'ala, she says, Qala Ayub al-Sakhtiyani, Wallahi ma akhlasa abdun qat illa ahabba an la yush'ira bimakanihi. Listen to this. Ayub al-Sakhtiyani says, A believer can not be sincere until they love being oblivious of their place and station. They want to be oblivious. They don't want people to know the level that they have, the stations that they have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Makanihi is two, is two meanings. With Allah, the place of what they do good in. So they don't have what? They don't have this desire to be known among people. They don't want to be known. I don't want people to know my good deeds. And that's why they used to say, listen to this. Among one of the scholars of the Salaf, they said, that the previous generation, they hated for people to see their good deeds like they hated for people to see their sins. Do you understand that? They hated for people to see their good deeds as much as they would have hated for people to see their sins. This is called sincerity. When you hate for people to see your good deeds as much as you hate for people to see your sins. So that's why be extremely careful of what you put out online. It's like fr- what, you're free. Tell a like, live broadcast of the biggest problem you may have with battling is your heart, your intention. And like we said, the battling of the intention is in three ways. Before you do the action, during the action, and then after the action. You could be doing something extremely sincere before and during. And then when it comes afterward, ego creeps in because somebody praises you. MashaAllah, I saw that you know, live that you did when you were going and feeding the poor. Unless you're going there to encourage people. Tell people, hey, we need to support this cause. Even then, you have to fight hard. Making sure that you don't you know, send any kind of iota of wanting people's praise in your heart. How hard is that? How hard is that? Of course, it's extremely hard, but you still have to fight. Especially for those who are charity workers, and they have to do that because that's, that's what they're doing. They're trying to encourage people. This does not excuse that we still have to fight that aspect. We still have to stop. And I'll give you some practical ways of doing that. And we've mentioned this once before, but I'll mention it again. One of the most... You know, beautiful ways of just trying to maintain a sincere intention is doing. Before you do any action, raise your hands to Allah and say, Oh Allah, sincerity in doing this, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Take some time out. Don't just jump into something. You're like, Oh inshallah, I got this intention, sincere mode, on, click. It doesn't work that way. Right? You raise your hands and you say, Ya Rabb, 
make my heart sincere. Keep me sincere and accept it as sincere. Remember, before, during, and after. And accept it as, accept it as sincere. Acceptance, qabool. Is what we're all, we're all looking for the acceptance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah to accept us, right? So that requires dua, just raise your hand. Before you do it, before you step in, before you back clear with you in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's one of the most, the, you know, blessed ways to try to, to try to overcome. Why? Because you say, Ya, ya Hayu, Ya Qayyum, bi rahmatika saghith. Oh, the ever living, the one that everyone is in need of him, he's not in need of any. Yes, your mercy. Do not make us accountable for ourselves, even for the blinking of an eye. Right? And rectify and help me in all of my affairs. You are the most merciful. And there's no God except you. This is one amongst the first du'as the Prophet ﷺ taught the Sahaba. Do you know why? Because it's absolute reliance. You don't even trust yourself to Allah. Uh, excuse me. You don't even trust yourself to yourself. You trust yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't, even, you don't even trust yourself to yourself. You trust yourself to Allah. That's the kind of reliance that we're looking for. And then she quotes uh, Fudayl ibn Iyad, uh, rahimahullah again. She says, وَقَالَ فُضَيْلِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَسْأَلُ الصَّادِقِينَ عَنْ صِدِقِهِمْ وَمِنْهُمْ فَكَيْفَ بِالْمَسَاكِينَ الْكَذَّابِينَ الْمُرَائِينَ وَبَكَى Listen to this. And this teaches you, by the way, that this great woman, she chooses the order of uh, the scholars that she quotes because she just quoted Fudayl ibn Iyad. So there's a reason why she's co- quoting Ayyub al Sakhtiyani and now she's quoting Fudayl ibn Iyad again, meaning there's, there's a wisdom behind the order. And this, is, this teaches you she's incredibly smart, she's incredibly intellectual. Rahimahullah ta'ala. So, guess what? The first uh, section of Fudayl ibn Iyad was telling you the conditions of, of acceptance, right? Then Ayyub al Sakhtiyani says, a person cannot be sincere in those. Conditions until they hate for, for people to, to, uh, to, to know about their state and to know about their level with Allah and for them to, for people to see their deeds. Now, she quotes Fudayl ibn Iyad. Allah will question the righteous about the righteousness, subhanAllah. So the first one was about the conditions of righteousness and accepted righteousness. The second was what the person should feel when they're doing that, that righteousness. And the third quote is about remembering that you will be asked about your righteousness. You will be held accountable. There is going to be a sense of accountability to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what a scholar is. She, doesn't, she, didn't, she didn't write any of this, but you extrapolate this from what she's quoted and the order that she quotes it in. This is the level of power in the writing. So she quotes Fulayl ibn Iyad and says, Allah always questions the righteous about their righteousness, including Isa ibn Maryam. Jesus is not his name, his name is Isa. If you want to know why, there's a whole lecture I did called uh, Jesus in, in the Islamic tradition. You can go look it up. That's not his name at all. It's not even close to his name. His name is Isa, Isa ibn Maryam. He said, including Isa ibn Maryam. I'll repeat this again. Allah always questions the righteous about their righteousness, including Isa ibn Maryam, the son of Mary. And then he says, who wept in response. Isa started to cry when he was told about this, or Fudayl ibn Iyad cried when he remembered that even Isa is going to be questioned. And he's the most righteous of of human beings on this planet. So if Isa is going to be questioned, what about you and I? What kind of questioning we will have? May Allah protect us. So then he completed that by saying the following. وَقِيلَ uh, uh, and, and said the following. So imagine how it will be for the wretched hypocritical unbelievers. Imagine how it will be for the wretched un- uh, hypocritical unbelievers. Then she said, someone said to Dawood al-Ta'i. Somebody said to Dawood al-Ta'i. إِنَّ ثَوْبَكَ مَقْلُوبٌ إِنَّ ثَوْبَكَ مَقْلُوبٌ So somebody said to Dawood al-Tai, your clothes are inside out. So Dawood responded, said, هَذِهِ لِبْسَةُ هَذِهِ لِبْسَةٌ لَبِسْتُهَا لِلَّهِ فَمَا كُنْتُ أُغَيِّرُهَا لِغَيْرِهِ He says, 
I dress this way for Allah and I won't change it for someone else. What does this mean? Meaning what? He didn't want to, show, he didn't want to be seen among others. Now look, this may sound weird and strange to you. But the whole point of this is not wear your clothes inside out. Forget that whole point. Okay? The point of this is, even in your clothing and your dress, you should not want to be seen of others. It's okay to dress nice. It's okay to look good. Nothing wrong with that. But the intention behind your clothes is what Dawud al is trying to teach us. Why are you wearing that? Are you looking for the attention and acknowledgement of someone else? Or are you doing this for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Okay? So in that sense, it's important to even have intention in dress. And then she said and quoted Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. She says, قَالَ عَلِي بْنُ أَبِي طَالِبٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَى عَنْهُ لِلْمُرَاءِ ثَلَاثْ عَلَامَاتِ A person who shows off has three, has three signs. يَكْسِلُ إِذَا كَانَ وَحْدَهُ وَيَنْشِطُ إِذَا كَانَ فِي النَّاسِ وَيَزِيدُ فِي الْعَمَلِ إِذَا أَثْنَى عَلَيْهِ وَيَنْقُصُ إِذَا أَذَمْ مِنْهُ Listen to this. And this is important for all of us. Ali ibn Abi Talib said, the one who shows off has three characteristics, three signs. The first one is, they are lazy when alone, but energetic when around people. So they sh- they're, they're lazy when by themselves, delaying prayers and all of that. And then when they're among people, hey guys, let's make sure we're praying exactly on time, all that, very dangerous. It shows the person's showing off. They will work harder if they're praised. So if they're praised, they will work harder rather than being pushed by their own motivation for the sake of Allah. So what does that mean? A person has to correct how much energy and input they have. When you want only the pleasure of Allah, you will work harder for that pleasure. But if a person is praised and it causes them to work harder alone, then they have to question themselves. Where is that sincerity then? Number three is that they slack off when they're criticized. They slack off when they're criticized. Rather than working harder, they say, oh, you know what, forget it. I'm not getting the praise I, I, I want. Is essentially, that's what they're saying. So I guess I'm not going to do it at all. Rather than saying, if it's for Allah, لا يخافون في الله لوم تلائم. They don't care in, in, the front, in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they don't have fear of the criticism of the criticizers. Allah says in the Quran, among the attributes and characteristics of the believers, they don't care of the blame of the blamers. If it, and they don't fear the, their blame if it's for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if somebody's criticizing them or someone's saying stop or whatever, you're, you're batil, you're this, you're that, they don't care. لا يخافون في الله لوم تلائم. They don't care in, 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 in the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, or fear, they don't care. Uh, in, uh, um, they don't care. With uh, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or with Allah azza wa jal, fear of the blame of the blayers or criti- criticism of the criticizers. She quotes then after that, قال أبو يعقوب المكفوف رضي الله عنه المخلص من يكتم حسناته كما يكتم سيئاته. There it is. This is the one I quoted earlier. Now we know who said it. Abu Ya'qub al Makhfuf said. May Allah be pleased with him. The sincere person is the one who hides their good deeds the way they hide their sins. They hide their good deeds like they hide their sins. SubhanAllah. And look, the, the order here is extremely important. For those of you that are writing notes, you can actually write down what is the munasabah. What is the connection between all of the statements that we just read? So remember the first statements that we read, how is it connecting to this logical progression that she wants us to benefit from? Uh, number one, understanding the conditions of sincerity. And is, is, uh, excuse me, understanding the condition of acceptance, our sincerity in, 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 um, uh, of intention. And number two is correctness of action. Then she spoke about what a person who is sincere, what is it that they will uh, hate? They will hate for people to see the actions that they do. Then she spoke about what? The level of 
a person being questioned and being constantly uh, worried about the level of accountability. And number four was the, uh, the notion of understanding that your intention is important in something menial as even wearing clothes. Then number five, the statement of Ali is to teach you about being fearful of having characteristics of those who show off the statement of Ali, those three characteristics. And now, and now in addition to that, the statement of Abu Yaqub al-Maghfouf, which comprehensively uh, tells us what it means for a person to become sincere, to not show your deeds off. And there's, ex- there's, there's, uh, there's exceptions to this. The exceptions are that if you're trying to encourage someone, and we spoke about this in great detail, uh, and especially if you're a leader in your family, you want to encourage your family to fast, you want to encourage your family to pray, you want to encourage somebody to do charity. So there's a difference between you know, saying, hey, look, I, I donated some, you should donate some too, versus sitting there and saying, you know what, mashallah, when I went to Umrah like 10 times, and alhamdulillah, that I've uh, memorized the Qur'an of this much ajza, you know, this, you, you need to be very careful. Don't uh, expose your deeds in that sense. Okay? Then she quotes Imam Hassan al-Basri. Hassan al-Basri, she says, قال الحسن أثني على رجل عند النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال قطعتم ظهره لو سمعها ما أفلح بعدها Listen to this Listen to this Hassan al-Basri said A man was praised in the presence of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says You have broken that person's back Or you have put a great burden on them were that person to hear your praise, he would have never succeeded or prospered again. He would have never prospered again. Why? Because hearing praise makes you what? Haughty and arrogant. Or haughty and arrogant and prideful. And that is why praising a child is, is, is discipline. And that's why my father-in-law, may Allah bless him, he said something beautiful. He said, children are raised with riya. He said, what do you mean? He said, look, you, you have to praise a child and tell them how amazing they are for them to do actions. So children are raised with riya. You say, mashallah, what a beautiful girl. Mashallah, how amazing you are. Mashallah, how beautiful you are. Mashallah, how amazing you are. <laughs> mashallah, you look so good in your hijab. Mashallah, you look so nice when you pray. Mashallah, so what are you doing? You're praising them. What does that praise do? It makes them do the actions. They don't know, they, have, they don't have the conceptualization of riyah or whatever. And also, they, by the way, from fiqh perspective as well, they, this is not held against them because they don't have responsibility to khalif yet. So you can still praise a child. Okay? So in that sense, children are raised with riyah. But when they grow up, that's when you teach them sincerity. What a beautiful and subhanAllah wise statement this is. Right? You, you have to you praise. and You have to uh, show love to a young child, and not only young children, but children in general. You have to show that all the way until elder age. Because a child who doesn't see that kind of support, and there's an emotional detachment, especially from fathers and mothers, what happens? People then go and start seeking that attention and love and, and acknowledgement from others. So all, how many of our Muslim women out there are seeking escapism from toxic relationships with their, with their parents? They just want anyone to come and say, you know what? I, I just want to leave. I want to leave the house. Because it's not a proper relationship. They weren't shown love. They weren't told they're beautiful. They're, they're, they weren't told you're worth more than any person who's going to mistreat you and all this other stuff. When they're not told and they're not shown public displays of affection, they're not shown any kind of love, what happens? They go and seek that love elsewhere. If any other person that comes and shows, you know, like he's the shining knight uh, about to save her from just giving her some attention, listening to her and so on and so forth. Okay? And that is why uh, when a person is elder, then that is when it's time to teach them what intention and sincerity means in intention. In that essence, the Prophet ﷺ is disciplining his Sahaba. And he says to them, listen, don't praise people in front of their house, in front of their house, in front of their face. Okay? <laughs> in front of, or their house, it's fine. But anyway, the point, the point being is in front of their face. Why? Because this may enter their heart and they become prideful. This may enter their heart and they become prideful. And uh, even the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said a beautiful hadith, I want you to deeply reflect over it. It's in the Sunan. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that uh, this man Abu Bakr, 
is from the leaders of the people of paradise, from the elder companions. From the elder companions, min al-kuhul. And then he said, O oh, Ali, who heard this, don't tell him. Don't tell him. Do you know why? So that there would not be a level of ostentation that comes in the heart of Abu Bakr anhu. And you might be like, but the Prophet ﷺ told him anyway much later. That's the whole point. The Prophet ﷺ told Abu Bakr anhu later when he developed what? Intention, overcoming pridefulness, overcoming ostentation, overcoming arrogance. That's when Abu Bakr anhu was given what? The glad tidings of Jannah and Umar and Uthman and Ali and Abdu- uh, and uh, uh, Zubair ibn al-Awwam and Talha ibn Ubaidillah and Abdurrahman ibn Awf and uh, Sa'id ibn Zayd uh, and the, the Ashr Mubashir ibn Jannah and all the rest of the Sahaba that have been promised paradise including Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum the blind companion radiallahu ta'ala anhu so this teaches us what? we have to work on how to build sincerity within our hearts in our actions before we do it during and after may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us this sincerity inshallah ta'ala we will stop here bi-idhnillah azza wa jal uh, and then continue inshallah tomorrow uh, bi-idhnillah with session 11 for both uh, the character of Hassan al-Basri as well as uh, the principles of spirituality uh, by uh, Aisha al-Ba'uni rahimahullah ta'ala جزاكم الله خير الجزاء واخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على محمد وعلى اله وصحبه سبحان الله وبحمدك سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك if any of you have any questions you're welcome to ask for this next couple minutes that we have if you have any questions If there's no questions, we'll just end it, inshallah. Zajan. Jazakumullah khair al jaza wa akhru da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu wa sallim ala sayyidina wa nabina Muhammad wa ala ayu sahbihi jma'in. May Allah subhanahu wa grant us the companionship of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm going to ask when, a, when should a girl start wearing the hijab? Uh, this question is twofold. Number one, if you're asking about a young girl, then um, it's up to the parents to discipline that child in loving Islam, loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and teaching them the meanings of Islam, the objectives of Islam, uh, teaching them the purpose of Islam, teaching them uh, the stories of the Sahaba, teaching them the seer of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa more importantly, first and foremost, teaching them then the stories of the Sahaba, teaching them about courageous women in Islam, starting with the mothers of the believers, teaching her about Aisha, teaching her about Khadija, making her love these figures. And uh, teaching her about Umm Ammara, the, the woman, female, warrior companion. Teaching them about uh, Sayyida Al-Hurra, which is a great uh, North African uh, queen who fought against the colonizers. All right? uh, teaching her about so many of these great scholars. Teaching about Aisha al Ba'uniya the one that we're, te- we're reading her book. So they have a sense of pride of our faith and our legacy and our heritage. And then, uh, when, a, when a child knows why we are Muslim, when a child understands the reasoning behind so many of the things that we do, so when you slowly, when she's, when she's, as she's growing up and you, 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 know, you say, hey, let's wear uh, hijab, we're going to go to the masjid, we're going to go outside or whatever, she sees her mother, and a mother will generally understand when to you know, uh, help her adjust to wearing hijab, etc. Then she will, by nature, make it, it'll be normal. And you see young girls, they themselves want to wear hijab. And especially with the social circles around you. So your, your social sh- circles are important. You know? uh, and that, in essence, will, will help raise a young girl to, uh, you know, by the time she's uh, the age of puberty, for her to herself have the level of confidence, being a strong woman, uh, intellectual, knowledgeable, to then, uh, of course, she's doing it from her own free will. There's no, there's no read to say well, should, when she or should she, shouldn't she. It'll become a natural process, organic, that she makes her own decision wearing 
wearing uh, wearing the hijab, for example. As far as a woman, um, you know, in, uh, beyond that, you know, a young woman or in her teens or, or uh, 20s or 30s, that, you know, she should strengthen her relationship with Allah, make sure that she has a, 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 a social circle that's helping her, right? And especially women who have worn the hijab later and also to help her overcome the excuses because we're all weak. We're going to have moments of weakness like you don't want, you know, uh, you, you want to take it off, for example. But when you have a good social circle, good friends to help support you, this will help you make that right decision, inshallah, when to do it. And honestly, people just need to have a sense of courage to overcome the, that wall of excuse that people make. So the sense of excuse that say, okay, you know, I'll do it later. I'll do it. So when? When are we going to do it? There is no time that's going to be right. So if you understand that your happiness and contentment is tied in doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, then you will want, do whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, whether it's hijab or whether it's a guy who's having a beard, or well, it doesn't matter to gender. It's literally a general principle of spirituality. And uh, you know, that element of, of f- over-focusing on, look, there's people that are uh, this way or that way, if they wear hijab, hijab is not the end all to Islam. All those things are fine. That's, or, you know, don't big up the issue to such an extent that it becomes another excuse in your own spirituality but rather overcome those things and say this is a part of my spirituality to do that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obligates. This is, this is just as anything else in Islam, inshallah. We have a question here. Can we do uh, istikhara for even small tasks even if we have confusion? Yeah, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala used to say we used to pray istikhara for even tying our shoelaces. This is just a, obviously it's an exaggerated statement, but it shows that even for menial tasks, you know, you don't know if you're going to go to this place for shopping or that place for shopping and you want to do istikhara dua, then that's fine. Of course, uh, anytime you consult Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing good is great. We had a question. If one hears uh, praise, what advice is given to prevent haughtiness from developing in the heart? Yeah, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala who would check himself by making a dua. Abu Bakr made this dua for when people used to praise him. And he would say, Rabbi ghfir li bima yaqulun. Oh Allah, forgive me. Forgive me for what they said about me. Waghfirli ma la ya'lamun and forgive me for what they don't know about me. Waj'alni khayrun mimma yadhunun and make me better than what they think about me. So what does this mean? A person lowers themselves and says, "Listen, I oh Allah, they don't know about me." But you also don't you know, it's like self don't be self-deprecating. Okay? Yeah, I'm miserable, I'm a loser. Don't talk that way. No, no, you're not a loser, okay? But at the same time, you should say in Jazakumullah khair, you know, uh, there's, alhamdulillah, there's people better than me for sure. Don't know. You're better than me. Somebody will praise you and say, I'm trying to get on your level, for example. So you downplay in a good way. Don't be self deprecating. A Muslim is not self deprecating. I'm a loser and nobody. Don't ever talk this way, okay? Then you are going to be that way. But you can say it in a way where it's up, uh, uh, elevating. Somebody says, man, mashallah. I'm trying to pray like you or like whatever, recite Qur'an like you or all that. Say, yeah, I'm trying to get on your level, mashallah. Look at that noodle that's coming from you. So you have a sense of elevated speech in the way you speak. And also remember the story of Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu and how he used to uh, check himself. And uh, number two, you, you look at exactly what was mentioned by Ibn Masur radiallahu anhu. How are you, and sorry, and also Ali. How are you when you're in private? So you want to increase your acts of worship in private rather than public. This is the whole point of this chapter. If we're doing less in private than we are in public, there's a problem. We should be doing more in private than we are in public. This is how you check your sincerity and your praise. When somebody's praising you in something public, what you should do, do more in private. Inshallah. I'm new, but do you have any book recommendations? Also tips to help us read more books. Uh, look at my highlights. I give a whole bunch of recommendations. Uh, a number of books that uh, we're, we're reading and doing. Uh, this book right here I really recommend for everyone, which is called... Uh, the Compendium of Knowledge uh, and Wisdom by Ibn Rajab al Hanbali. I know it's uh, flipped because of the uh, because of the camera, but it's called the Compendium of Knowledge and Wisdom. It's the explanation of forty hadith Imam Nawawi. It's Turaf Publications. You can see on the bottom. You can't see anyway. Okay, it's Turaf Publications, the Compendium of Knowledge and Wisdom. I really recommend for that. Uh, Purification of the Heart uh, is an amazing book. Um, and, and you know these are some books to, to start you off with. A, a third book uh, I would definitely recommend for everyone is uh, in the footsteps of the Prophet, uh, on the seat of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I also teach five days a week, uh, Thursday and Friday. I teach from uh, this book, which I really recommend as well, uh, which is excuse me, which is um, uh, the Prophet of Mercy by Abu Hassan al Nadwi. 
I recommend this book, but we're, uh, we go through it. Uh, alhamdulillah. I have to drop all my books here. Excuse me. Okay. We have another question here. How can we come in your surroundings? Be, be, or be natural. One of the problems with our Muslim uh, environments is that we create awkwardness for no reason. Why? Because there's a hypersexualized mentality amongst conservative Muslims. Um, just be normal, be average. Just when, when, when you're organic with people around you, and don't think that you're being attacked in your sexuality or something like that, just be, just be calm. Just talk normally to people as, as, as it is. And I've done a um, podcast video on this with Ilmfeed on gender interaction and relations. Go listen to it, inshallah. So uh, for the one who asked this question, go listen to that video. Type Ilmfeed, like marriage, gender, and uh, my name, Hasib Noor. Okay? And you can watch that video, inshallah. I, we talk about it in great lengths. But one of, this, one of the problems is that we have a hypersexualized understanding of, of faith. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ did not have a barrier between men and women, and it, it, didn't, it wasn't there in the, in the Khulafa al-Rashidin's time, and it was put there in 1995, which teaches you that they were, had a very organic, you know, respectful, and um, you know, uh, upholding and professional uh, in their in their uh, dealings with with each other in their time. Would you would would be giving sadaqa out of pity be considered for the sake of Allah as well? Um, you should first primarily and uh, you know feeling first of all pity or uh, that people are deserving of it. The first thing that you should think about is that you are more deserving of it than they are. You are more deserving of the reward. Excuse me, deserving. I'm sorry. You are more in need of it than they are. So you should think of they're not in need. I am in need. What are you in need of? of? You're in need of the mercy of Allah. More than they are in need. So in that sense, you, you, the primary thing that you will have, the primary uh, feeling that you have in your heart is that I am in need more than the person that, that's being given. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Give from the wealth that we have made you trustees over. So Allah made us trustees. We're, we're just, you know, we're, we've just been made as people that to take this wealth and give it to those who are deserve, uh, deserving of it. So that's number one. As far as the feeling of pity, of course, it's natural. I'm going to have pity towards another Muslim. But I want you to make that feeling not just the main reason. But the main reason should be saying this is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is for the sake of Allah. And the fact that I'm supporting number two, I'm supporting a Muslim brother or sister or a non-Muslim who's in need. Because it's a form of da'wah. It's a form of bringing their heart closer to Islam. It's a form of also helping another human being, which is rewarded as the Prophet says. And every living being, there is reward that you help. That's why the Prophet said, I mean, for the love of God, I want you all to think about this. The Prophet ﷺ said that a woman of the night uh, who put, uh, went down a well and filled her shoe to feed a dog was forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then what about a, a Muslim who helps feed another, another human being, non-Muslim or Muslim? So we have to think about it in the essence that Allah is kind, but we have to, we have to do it sincerely for the sake of Allah Azza wa Okay, Jazakum khair, that's... Uh, the end of all um, questions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all and Allah grant you all khair in this dunya and akhirah, protect all of us and our families and our spouses. And uh, for those of you who have children, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them and for your, your parents and, and everyone from sickness. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the companionship of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the highest levels of Jannah. Wa akhiru da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil ameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala sayyidina wa nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We'll see you inshallah.